Greetings, Inquisitors. Welcome to the Holocron. This is the Hope of the Rebellion, a uh, starting guide for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes mobile game for 2023. This is going to focus on building up an account and working through the profundity journey as the first major step in the account building. This is going to give all necessary information to start an account and build through about 12 months of gameplay free to play. It'll be less than that for hyperdrive, but uh, it builds in a way that I believe optimizes the efficiency of what's best in the game right now. This is going to give you a really good start on events, conquest, and fleet arena with hope of the rebellion. The skill and commitment for this path, I would say overall is, is medium. The path is manageable for almost any skill level. I do propose a, a timeline in here and I go by weeks and that uh, timeline is, is represented, uh, representative of a player who is familiar with the game at least a little bit, or at least is a competitive player when they start the game. Uh, don't be surprised if you're brand new to this game or mobile collector games in general. You, maybe you get behind the timeline a little bit. Don't worry, the path will still lead you down the most efficient way to uh, get what you want out of the game. I have done player guides for 2023. It, sort of a statement on where I believe the game is and why we should pursue Fleet Arena as the first major goal and uh, Conquest as the second major goal. So if you want to go through that, look at all the different event types, all the different game modes, and why I've prioritized building this uh, journey the way I have, it's all in there. This build is going to focus on event income first, including Conquest, and then it will transition into the Profundity. PvP performance, I do expect to skyrocket right at first. We're going to build some stuff that's going to be great for PvP. But then there's a part in the middle of the journey where I do expect it to kind of plateau a bit as we work through the profundity journey. Uh, there will be enough early game focus on dark side. We're still going to build geos and things like that. So for somebody looking for an early guild that expects uh, GOTB and especially for Wat Tambor Shard readiness, this account will be fine for that. We are going to build into an early full relic team, and that's also going to make data crowns available for us to use in some relevant way, so that's nice. Um, and there is, I believe, going to be a period of time where a fleet arena, if you are in a very competitive fleet arena shard, your fleet placement is likely to drop off. Uh, if someone is going for the executor, that ship is going to be easier to get before you get profundity. So there may be a gap between when other people start getting executors and when you lock down your profundity. I have done a separate uh, holocron, my first starting guide for 2023 called Imperial Doctrine. That is similar concept, but works through the executor. So the Imperial Doctrine is a faster build. It builds the mega fleet on a shorter timeline. And it does secure that fleet income earlier to guarantee you accelerate your count building in that way. Uh, the Imperial Doctrine is more of a base of offensive teams for PvP, especially Grand Arena. So if that's uh, more to your liking, you might want to take a look at that and consider which one is right for you. What we're going to talk about, we're actually going to break this uh, total build up into three separate holocrons. Uh, looking at how much information there is to, to go through, I, I think it's best if we make a series of videos out of this one. Uh, the Imperial Doctrine got up over two hours, so I don't want to do that again with this one. All right, so we're going to talk first about Block Zero, stabilizing the account. We're going to level to 85. People with the Hyperdrive bundle, you can skip through this part if you want, but uh, it's still in your best interest to watch it because even if you buy the Hyperdrive bundle, these are still the team's uh, that I would expect you to want to build starting out with the hyperdrive. We're going to talk about four teams at first, potentially a fifth, so we'll get there. Uh, we'll talk about the block strategy. Again, in my introductory guides, I explain how I'm using the block diagrams or the, like the block graphics to explain what we're building. There's also going to be a big discussion on Cantina. That This is critical for the journey, and I think if we don't understand the pressure on Cantina energy, right from the start of this build, it's going to be uh, very easy to fall behind and not meet the milestones. We'll talk through shop use. We also talk through shop use in Imperial Doctrine, but this time we're going to talk about it again. And it's going to be different because, of course, there's different characters that we're going to have to focus on out of these shops. So we're just going to do that over. And then we'll talk about the Fleet Tier 3 Zeta Challenge. Again, that's going to be different than the Imperial Doctrine, so we need to go through that. All right, 
the second holocron, we're going to finish out block zero, transition to block one. We are going to work through a full Relic CLS team and more event teams. We'll talk about that in the second uh, holocron. And uh, that'll prepare us for the profundity. We'll talk a little bit about the shops again. And then in the Hope of the Rebellion 3, we're going to finish off CLS. We're going to go into Block 2, work through the Profundity. And then we're going to talk about what's next after the Profundity is finishing up or finished. All right, the first team we're going to work on when we start the account. Uh, these Imperial Troopers are just too good. We're always going to try to build those for the account. With one relic on an on a Imperial Trooper team, you can uh, quite easily do assault battles. And the assault battle events give you uh, some particular loot out of the challenge tier one uh, called injectors, uh, injector handles and, and things like that that you use for relicking characters. They're not easy to get throughout the game. And if you have to farm them for every character that you relic, it's super uh, time consuming and it takes your energy that you want to use for other things. So the more assault battles we can get locked down at challenge tier one, the easier it's going to be for us to snowball the account. And these troopers do two different uh, assault battles. So we're going to build them first. It'll have all dark side characters. It'll also be the team that you're using to unlock dark side battles. Um, it is built for the assault battles and uh, can be uh, two different ones can be completed. And in the early game, when Galactic War is relevant, uh, this team in the very early game is probably going to struggle in Galactic War. In Imperial Doctrine, we talked about an Iden Versio team. We're not going to be able to do that Iden team with this uh, build. So you're stuck with the traditional troopers. And I do suggest a Snow Trooper and a Range Trooper. Of course, Dark Trooper is better, but uh, y you're going to want to do what's easiest and most friendly for the, the energy that you've got. So in this case, this is the team that I'm recommending. And if you have struggles to get three-star completions in dark side nodes, use the big friend method. This is simple. You come over onto the Discord for Lokwitter. The description is down below if you need that. Or you just go in the game or go in a guild and you find people with already developed accounts and you ask to be their friend in the game. If you ask 100 people like that to be your friend, uh, you know, some of them are going to say yes. You get to use their character uh, as a second leader and you can complete both light and dark side uh, you can put in one good character and their big character their big character will wreck the whole uh, battle and as long as your character stays alive and you finish with one character that you started with you'll get three stars for the node and then you can sim it later so that's the big friend method you get friends with really big characters you use those characters to beat the nodes to three stars and uh, you don't have to put five of your own characters in. You only have to put one. If you start with one and finish with one, it's three stars. All right. Uh, Veers comes off a of light side 4C and the guild event store. And in this case, uh, we're definitely going to build Veers out of the guild event store. We do not want to have to farm him at all. So that's going to be a commitment on your um, get one currency as you start the game. The range trooper comes from dark side 3A. We can start farming that pretty quickly. Um, we're not going to be able to do much with that, but, uh, but get it started, and that's about it. Uh, Admiral Piet comes off light side 6B. We are going to have to finish him out. Stark comes from the guild store. Snow Trooper comes from the cantina and bronze packs. And uh, if we don't have time to finish out the range trooper, then in the end, once we need seven-star troopers for the assault battle, we're going to go into the shops, and we're going to build the storm trooper out of the shop and have him for a uh, seven-star trooper. So that's what we're going to do with Team 1. Team 2 is going to be the Bastila Shawn Jedi. Uh, Bastila does give bonus protection. Uh, she's good for three-star wins. We're going to build a Jedi team around her with Qui-Gon, uh, Mace Windu, and Ahsoka out of the shop. And we're going to farm Jedi Knight Anakin to give a little bit of strength to this team. Bastila does give you much better chances to three-star nodes, but you can still use that big friend method if you need to get three stars. Um, the only way to make room for Bastila in this uh, farm is to get Veers out of the Guild Event Store. So we're definitely recommending for this one that it's Bastila lead. She's the one that gets farmed and Veers has to come from the, the Guild Store. Mace and Jedi Knight Anakin are the gearing priorities. Uh, Mace tanks and, of course, Jedi Knight Anakin's doing a lot of damage. So those two characters, if you can get them uh, the better gear, that's preferred. 
Um, Anakin comes off of a dark side node. And when you see the gear farming guide, we have to finish up Anakin very quickly. We've got to get him done right away because uh, we got to start other farms for the journeys that we're on. And if we don't start those farms timely, the whole timeline falls apart. So that will require you right at the start of the game. Um, I'm going to ask you to spend 25 crystals per day refreshing that node so that you can farm it once. 25 crystals lets you farm it twice. So you'll do 10 runs per day with Jedi Knight Anakin. Bastila comes off a dark side. 5B, Qui-Gon comes from the Cantina store. So does Ahsoka. And Mace Windu comes out of the Squad Arena store. The third team that we're working on is uh, Geos. And you could start out with Newt Gunray. Uh, he comes out of the Squad store. You may not be able to buy him out to all the stars in this build. It, it's not so important. He's a scoundrel that you're going to want for... Uh, in a lot of builds, you're going to want him as a scoundrel for the early uh, events for scoundrels. But we're building plenty of scoundrels, so don't worry too much about Newt Gunray. But uh, if you just get him unlocked, he can be a leader for this team. Uh, Asajj Ventress is a character that we're going to be interested in building later. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get some of her as well. And again, in the early game, this team isn't going to be well developed. You can use it like this in Galactic Wars, but uh, until you start building for fleet and putting gear on your Geos, it's going to be a mediocre team at best. You're just collecting the stars. All right. Then uh, when you start to approach 60, of course, that's when you're going to hit fleet. Uh, let's say when you hit level 50 or so, you're going to start focusing as much gear as you can on the pilots, which is the soldier, the spy. And you can't focus on Sunfac until you can get him out of the fleet store. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and put that up here as a priority for gearing around 60. At 60, Sunfac becomes available. That's a priority. And we're going to talk about the banking system for fleet currency, where you save up fleet currency so that you always have some in the bank. And then when your top priority characters show up in the fleet arena store, you're always going to be able to buy those. At level 83, the Geo Brood Alpha comes available on the Cantina farm. So you're going to want to get Brood Alpha at least unlocked, if not to uh, 7 stars, then at least you want to get unlocked and get that ready. Eventually you want to get him to 7 stars and 16,500 galactic power so that you could participate in that Wat Tambor event. The order matters just in case people don't know when you set up your team. You do want uh, Geo Brood Alpha in the lead slot, then you want uh, Sunfac next, Soldier, Spy, and then Poggle at the end. And uh, the reasoning for this is, is simply because uh, Sunfac uh, removes buffs, Soldier puts on Tenacity down, and then Poggle puts on Ability Block. So having them in the right order is useful. Our fourth team is going to be Bounty Hunters. Bosk, IG-88, Cad Bane, Boba Fett, Jango Fett. Uh, for these bounty hunters, don't be concerned with building them up right away. They're not a critical team for our galactic wars or things like that. And honestly, if you start building them up and you add to your galactic power, that's going to make galactic war harder anyway. So think about just collecting these characters, get their shards, get them to the point where they're seven stars, leave them at level one, don't work on their skills right at first. All right, this is not uh, the best bounty hunter team by any means. But this is the one that we're going to build because it's efficient. Uh, boss comes off a of dark side 9B. Uh, you're going to start the game, and it's going to be at least 10 weeks before you can even access boss, roughly. Uh, IG-88 comes from the Squad Arena store. Cad Bane from Galactic War. Boba Fett from Cantina. And Django Fett comes from the same note as Hound's Tooth. We're going to be farming Hound's Tooth, so we will have a Django. So that's why this team is selected. We're also going to have a Rebel Y-Wing, and currently, as of this uh, uh, Holocron, uh, Grief Karga is also on that Rebel Y-Wing node. But I can't rely on that being the case for the future, but if you do get a Grief Karga and you'd rather build him than Jango Fett, then go ahead and add him to the fifth of the team, and that would make the team better. All right, Team 5. You're going to see some stuff in the early farming guide where we're working on Ewok Elder, Vander Chewbacca, and uh, 3PO and Chewie, who's also called Chupio. That's probably how I'll refer to him here and there. So if you ever hear me talk about Chupio, that's 3PO and Chewie. 
We don't really have a team for them. They do need to be farmed. They are part of the what we're planning to build, and we'll miss milestones if we don't farm them. But again, similarly, you don't have to gear these characters. You're collecting stars at first, and uh, you know it can be enough just to collect the stars. All right, fleet farming. Uh, Jedi Knight Anakin's ship is good for every build, and before we get into relicking characters and we don't have like pressure on our fleet energy, uh, we're going to build Jedi Knight Anakin's ship pretty much every time for every guide I ever make until something changes. Uh, the ship is just so good. Uh, if it's not Galactic Republic, it doesn't even matter. You bring Jedi Knight Anakin in as reinforcement. He has a big area effect skill that hits very hard. It puts on buff immunity. Uh, it's incredibly useful just as a plug-and-play ship in, in just about any fleet you want. So we want to build Anakin for the Jedi team. We want to build his ship for the fleet. We also have to do the Outrider and the Rebel Y-Wings for the Profundity Journey. Sunfac also comes from the shops. We'll work on farming him, but uh, mainly we want to be able to pull him out of the shops. And then as, if, if any of these three ships were to happen to finish uh, early, uh, or let's say... Uh, you have extra fleet energy at the start before some of these nodes become available. You can always farm 3C normal. That's going to be giving you uh, Mark 12 hollow lenses that are very good for relicking characters. It also gives you Mark 6 syringes, so it's a very good node to farm. If you ever have fleet energy and nothing to do with it, you can always uh, farm there. Slave 1 is going to be farmed when Sunfac is finished. But again, these ships come out of the shop, so maybe you get them a little bit out of the shop, a little bit out of farming. Here's the visual. So now that we've talked about the first few teams in Fleet, present the whole visual. Uh, you can't really read it, but it just kind of gives you an idea of the complexity of the build, what we're looking at. And I've sort of put all the pieces to this jigsaw puzzle together in a way where we meet a bunch of critical timings. We build really good teams at what I believe is a good time for the account to take advantage of them, and we end up finishing it out around 54 weeks with the profundity now this is free to play and of course if you do the hyperdrive bundle it's going to uh, take some off of that uh, actually the hyperdrive bundle is going to take a lot off of that really a lot here's the early farm uh what you see here we've got jedi knight anakin ewok elder uh, you got two nodes that have anakin on them and if you can get to that range trooper a little bit here to unlock him early if you want that character you can do that Otherwise, just get that uh, Stormtrooper out of the shop. That's fine, too. Vandor Chewbacca gets picked up as soon as his node's available, as does Basta Lashan, 3PO, and Chewie. Piet comes in around week 7 or 8, and then Houndstooth comes in somewhere around week 9 or 10. And then finally, Bosk, uh, after week 10 or so, you should be on those final nodes, be able to pick up Bosk. And you can see... We farm the Elder, and then once the Elder finishes up, we're going to pick Bastila back up on week 15 or 16 up here on the second colored line. You'll see we finish out Bastila Shawn to seven stars, so we will get back to her. And when Vandor Chewbacca finishes up, we'll start farming Wicket uh, for the Ewoks. So it gives you a little idea what to expect. Ship-wise, we've got Jedi Knight, Anakin, and Sunfac. And then once we get the nodes available for the Outrider and the Y-Wing, uh, we pick those up. When Sunfac is done, we pick up Slave 1. I did take some time to go through the Cantina um, farms because you really need a lot of characters out of the Cantina for this. So what I did was I loaded up a bunch of these characters up front that you need and then sort of spaced it out more and more. As you start relicking characters later on for the journeys and, and for these teams, you're not going to have nearly as much Cantina energy to build characters. So in the first six weeks, we're really putting a lot of effort into Spy and Soldier. And uh, you won't get these characters finished unless you get a few Cantina refreshes in here and there. But really, you need to get them at least to six stars in this first period. Uh, there's really a lot of pressure to get a lot of these Cantina characters done. Farm Boy Luke and Old Ben I've put in here. Uh, they also are available out of the shops, the guild activity shop. You can pick these characters up, and you're definitely going to want to do that. You don't want to have to farm these characters all the way up out of the cantina. You do need them to seven stars for the CLS journey. So weeks seven through ten, I kind of have them as placeholders. Farm a little bit there, but you're going to have to trust that you'll get some out of the shop and maybe have to come back to it. Dash Rendar is in there for week 11 and 12. 
the reason we're waiting so long on him, like I would put Dash Rendar in week seven, but I don't think you'll be able to get to his cantina node that soon. So I put Dash Rendar farm a little later, a little further out, just to make sure that your account would progress enough to have that cantina node unlocked and be able to farm him. And then the Geo Brood Alpha we've got coming in there at week 13, 14, when you hit level 83. So you see, we've kind of front-end loaded these characters. It doesn't necessarily mean that by week 14, you've got all seven of these, or six of these characters uh, done to seven stars, but you need to have progress on all of them and a lot of progress on Soldier and Spy. You do need to seven star them for fleet. So basically you work on Soldier and Spy in week seven through 10, you're working on them. You're working a little bit on Farm Boy Luke and Old Ben. If you finish the Geos up, then you got to get Dash Rendar to seven stars. Geo Brood Alpha, at this point, you can just take to the unlock and get back to Dash Rendar. But you need to get Dash to seven stars as well. And again, you're, you're not going to come anywhere close to this timing unless you spend some refreshes over there. So that's why we have to talk about Cantina. For this build, uh, your, your account has to generate at least 20, 250 crystals per day pretty early on. And for three energy refreshes and at least one Cantina refresh every day. Uh, if you can't get at least that 250, it, it, it doesn't mean you can't succeed with this build, but it does mean that it's going to take more time. Ideally, you want to be able to score at least 500 crystals. And if you can work your way up to a decent fleet placement, early on you'll be placing for maybe 100 crystals out of fleet. The quests for the day give you uh, between 50 and 100 crystals. You'll get some for events. And then, of course, even moderate participation early on in Grand Arena does start giving you crystals every day. And payouts for your wins and payouts at the end of the GAC week for however you placed. So... Uh, overall, you should be able to average about 500 crystals a day. With this account build, you should be fine uh, to do well in all those modes and get some crystals. Free to play, it, it's not always going to be easy to generate those crystals on the way to 85. Uh, hyperdrive, it's going to be possible much, much sooner, of course. If you do the hyperdrive, you're going to come right in onto this account with good fleet placement. You'll be able to sort of, uh, you know, uh, apply some effort to the hound's tooth and kind of push other people out of the way. And uh, everybody else has to catch up with you. So the hyperdrive bundle definitely has an advantage here. And they also get a bunch of crystals in the hyperdrive bundle that'll help force a lot of those cantina refreshes early on, which is good. Um, extra cantina spending also gives you more cantina currency, which is going to allow you to purchase more characters from the cantina store. And we're going to need a lot of purchases from the cantina store. Cassian's U-Wing is, is required for the profundity journey. And we do have, to, that's a lot of cantina energy or uh, cantina shop currency that you have to feed in uh, to get that Cassian's U-Wing. Now, the good news is, once you get Cassian's U-Wing to seven stars, it is the most efficient conversion in the game for currency to shard shop currency. So once you want to actually want to get that finished kind of early in this build, and then you just want to keep purchasing Cassian's U-Wing shards uh, later on to, uh, to maximize your returns on, on the shard shop. If a player struggles to meet the basic uh, refresh strategy, uh, the further you get behind, you're going to have to sacrifice um, basically what players will sacrifice. It's not the right thing to do, but it's what people will tend to default to, is they'll start skipping refreshes on mods. The further you get behind on mods, the harder it is to catch up later. So uh, don't, don't try not to get yourself in a position where you're losing out on, on mods. And uh, really, if you... If you're willing to spend any money at all on this account, if you don't want to be totally free to play, even if you're not buying the Hyperdrive bundle, if you buy $20 worth of crystals along the way and just use those for Cantina refreshes for this build, it's going to help a lot. If you're not willing or able to do the Hyperdrive bundle, then uh, you may need a different strategy. And if you, let's say you get 300 a day, uh, you could do three energy refreshes, one fleet, uh, two mod refreshes with the 300 crystals and uh, it's going to delay your event and income teams and it is going to make this journey probably take six to eight weeks longer in total or even more uh, it's the reverse of a snowball effect right once you start getting behind you may get further and further behind 
So in that first six weeks, we really need to have good effort on Spy and Soldier, Farm Boy and Old Ben while leveling up, getting them out of the shops. Dash and Geo Brood Alpha are in the higher nodes. All right, let's go into shop management now. So spending currency in the shops is important. And again, in a similar fashion, if you're efficient with your shop purchases, um, you can do a lot of good things. If you waste your shop currency, you can't get it back and you lose time and you lose efficiency. I'm going to strongly, uh, for this particular build, the bank method is even more important than uh, for other builds I've done in the past. Uh, there are key characters that you have to buy pretty much every time they show up. And we're going to have, especially in the guild activity store, we're going to have a lot less freedom to buy gear because there are a bunch of character shards that we're going to want out of there. So we don't want to miss purchase opportunities. So for that shop, uh, you know, build up a big bank. First tab is the shipment store. As always, we just buy those four that we can get for credits. So the top lines are usually sold for credits, uh, but are crystals. But below that, there's four pieces that are sold for uh, credits. They're the best value in the game. There's not many places where you can just trade credits for gear. You buy that stuff, even if you don't use it on a character, you can... Uh, Crunch it up at the Jawa Scavenger to make relic materials uh, for later relic characters. So it's all good. Buy that. The, Chris, the, the credit cost is so low, it's always worth it. Uh, weekly shipments, I'm going to say just stay out of there in the early game. Uh, on this build, we're going to talk about it later, but you will need to get in here for purchases of um, materials for higher relic characters. But right at first, we're not interested in that shop. In the Cantina store, we're going to need a bunch of stuff out of here. We have to unlock Ahsoka, Qui-Gon Jinn, and the Stormtrooper that we talked about. You're going to get Ahsoka to 7, Stormtrooper to 7, Boba Fett to 7, uh, and then Qui-Gon, and then Cassian's Ewing you're just going to have to work on over time. Now that's already five things that you're working on. Just realize we also need Stormtrooper Han, eventually Biston, Old Daka, Chopper, and if you want to do the optional stuff at the end, you're also going to need fives. So th there's up to 10 characters and again this is this is over a course of about 30 weeks before we really need any of these characters uh, finished uh, you'll see the timing on it but uh, there, there's time to do this but because we need so many characters again if we don't get a, a cantina refreshes we're not going to get the currency to buy these characters out of the cantina shop so we need both of those things. We need Cantina Refreshes to farm the Cantina characters, and we need the Cantina Currency here in the shop to get all these characters built so that we don't have to farm for other characters, for example. Uh, guild, in the Guild Activity Store, keep a big bank. We're, I'm going to recommend 5,000 uh, in the bank before you buy any gear. Characters are random, and the Guild Activity Currency uh, varies a lot. So some weeks you may be getting quite a bit of this, some weeks you may get less. You can get more of it. Pay attention to your guild objective every day, as I recommend, and make sure you're doing what's in the guild objective to try to help you get more guild activity currency. But uh, anyway, you, you need Stark, Low Gray, and Jyn Erso uh, right at first. You also need to make purchases on Elder, Paplu, Farm Boy, Ben, and uh, Sunfat can occasionally pop up over here too, I think. So if you have over 3,000 currency banked, you can look at the Elder, Paplu, Farm Boy, Ben, and Sunfac. If you're under 3,000, then you're only buying Stark, Low Gray, and Jyn Erso until those three characters are finished out. So those are your top priority. And then all of this other stuff, uh, you could see, because you know, in any given rotation of that shop refreshing a few times before you get more uh, guild currency, uh, you could see a bunch of these characters and if you can't afford to buy them, it'd be pretty frustrating. So just especially at first, don't go in there and just start clicking on gear. You know, don't, oh, hey, there's some Carbantes, grab them out of here. Now the Carbantes, uh, stun cuffs, stun guns, things like that do show up in this shop. Uh, I don't think stun guns do, but, but car, uh, stun cuffs, Carbantes, there's good gear all over the place. There's these four pieces, the Mark VII Nubian scanners, the furnaces, the Mark V droid callers, and the Nubian discs. Those are raid gear. They can't be farmed in the game. This shop is a, a source to get them. And in the early game, some of your characters are probably going to be hung up on these pieces, waiting for event or raid loot to get them. If you fall to the temptation and you just go through the uh, sh uh, guild shop here and you just buy everything you need to gear your characters, 
uh, you're going to miss out on the shard timing and miss out on some key stuff for this journey. So hold off on the gear unless you got a big bank saved up. Squad Arena. We need Mace and Tarkin. Uh, they unlock through fleet, so you'll get some of them. Uh, the first thing we want to do is get IG-88. You can unlock Newt Gunray, like I said. Don't, don't, you don't need to take him all the way up to seven stars, but maybe just unlock him. Mace and Tarkin, you're going to want to get both of them to seven stars. Then Princess Leia, you have to get to seven for the CLS journey. We also need, eventually, Asajj Ventress, Cassian Andor, Kanan Jarrus. And, of course, we need to buy a bunch of prestige so we can decorate that profundity up with all kinds of skills when we get it. Uh, the Galactic War Store uh, is for ships. Really, Poggle is the only thing you should be buying out of the shop on your way up to 60. Once you hit 60, really focus on the Geo ships, the ships that you need for the journeys. Try not to buy too much on characters out of here at first. Like I said, just Poggle and then kind of focus down on the ships. Once you get the ships in good shape, then we can switch over. And there's a bunch of stuff that we need out of this shop. Um, we also need Cad Bane out of here. I guess technically if you want to work on Cad Bane on your way up to 60, you can grab some of his shards. But, uh, but I, I would focus on the, at least uh, getting the Spy and Soldier ships finished out before we uh, spend too much on Cad Bane. We're definitely going to need him, uh, but I'll explain that later. Um, I say to keep one day worth of Galactic War Store currency, at least 1,200 in the bank at all times. And that way, if Sunfac happens to show up three times in a row before the next day, you can always make three purchases of Sunfac. You don't need too big of a bank on this one. Um, you also have to keep an eye out, not just for the Imperial tie, but also for the First Order tie. So, um, we also need bigs out of here. But I'm encouraging you not to spend on bigs. Wait until after the level 78 challenge, after we've gotten that challenge completed, uh, before you work on the big ship out of this store. All right. Um, in the mod store, now, eventually you're going to want to be looking through here and buying mods when it makes sense to buy. But in the early game, there is so much pressure on your credits and fleet building materials that uh, the likelihood that you're going to get a great mod out of it's is pretty low. If you have extra credits to spend, then you want to take every chance you can get to get a good mod. But early in the game, you really don't have the currency to spend. They're really quite expensive compared to the likelihood that something works out. So probably for the first, you know, few months at least, uh, just don't bother looking in here too much. Uh, later on, you, of course, you'll want to pay attention to it. In uh, the Fleet Arena store, man, there are so many priorities. Save a big bank, at least 3,000 currency. I might even suggest 5,000 fleet currency as a bank uh, because the priority characters in this build really are prioritized. Biston's U-Wing does show up in the top right corner. Now, we can farm that um, from a node, but getting it out of the shop prevents us needing to farm too much of it. So the more we can buy out of the shop, the better off we are. If you're free to play or if you're hyperdrive bundle, you can also get Darth Vader shards. We're going to want to relic Darth Vader pretty early, so it helps if you can get some purchases out of the shop here. You can also do a lot of quests with Vader, uh, so be sure you look at your objectives tabs, if you're hyperdrive especially, because you can get Darth Vader shards for completing each zone. So you can go back through for zone completions and get a ton of Vader shards that way. So... Uh, whether you're free to play or whether you're uh, hyperdrive, look for all the quests for Vader shards so that you don't have to buy them. Makes things a lot easier. General Grievous is going to be a priority uh, to get him to unlock. It's not quite as important in this build to get him to seven stars as it is in some other builds, but uh, you need him for the malevolence, and we do want to go for that as our first big capital ship. Sunfac and his ship. Sunfac and his ship are the main priority. But the reason I have the other stuff higher prioritized than Sunfac uh, is because they're, they, they show up rarely. So you always want to buy those when they show up. And then you want to buy Sunfac and his ship. And we do need both the First Order TIE pilot and his ship. We just need to get the ship to five stars. So if you get enough shards to get that ship to five stars, uh, you can stop. And then Slave 1. And then Ghost Phantom. Eventually, we'll want to buy Ezra Bridger out of here, Plo and his ship, the Scarif Rebel, 
and the tie advanced and Rex's arc are also interesting. And again, remember this total build is going for um, over a year. So even though there's 12 things on here, just realize this page is the priority at first. You don't even need to be thinking about this stuff until it's finished out. And, uh, you know, not all of these ships, the Phantom, for example, is not required as part of the profundity journey. So you don't necessarily even have to go after it if you don't have the currency to do so. It's just nice to have. It is considered a cargo ship. So, you know, maybe we want to buy that out of the shop at some point. Uh, Biston's U-Wing, like we said, is going to reduce the farm. Sunfac and the ship are infrequent, so we're going to want to grab those up. Uh, Vader and GG, like we talked about. Over time, there's a lot that needs to come from this shop. There are Zeta materials in here, but my advice is uh, you're probably going to be playing the game for this full year without buying too many of those Zeta materials. And uh, maybe you trust me when I say I've played the Obtisio account now for a year. I've done the Profundity. I've pretty much done this journey. I haven't bought any Zeta pieces out of the fleet shop, and I'm completely satisfied with the number of Zetas that I have. So we're not desperate for those Zetas. Uh, focus on the, the ships. All right. Spend only uh, your guild event tokens to uh, spend those only on the Malevolence or Negotiator. Uh, we're going to unlock the Malevolence first, take it to five stars, then work on the Negotiator. With the Guild Event Token 1, we're going to first buy Veers. Then we're going to look for Relic Materials to, to pick up our first few Relics uh, more quickly. And then we're going to settle into farming Wampa. It is my recommendation right now with this build, uh, especially because at some point, we're building all kinds of rebels. Maybe we want to go for Jedi Master Luke at some point in the account. And you need Wampa and, Her Wampa and Hermit Yoda. So we're going to forego things like gas and Malak and other things that we could be using Get One for. And we're going to focus it first on the Wampa. If you find yourself getting behind in the milestones uh, for relics, you can spend your uh, guild event token one on gear. Instead of Wampa, again, we're not planning for gas right away or something like that. So... Um, used to be my recommendation not to spend get one on anything except these uh, critical characters. But right now I feel like getting ahead, getting more relic characters early on, getting your first uh, fleet journey done and getting that mega fleet locked down is so important that I personally am willing to sacrifice the timing on a gas or a get one character just to get the account going. You can always build that stuff in later. In the Guild Are Grand Arena store, uh, the Championship store opens after 85 when you play Grand Arena. And uh, I just use for Cairo computers. There's a lot of good stuff in this shop. Cairo computers are on a node that's not very good to farm. The Cairo shock prods are on a node that's fantastic to farm. So if we just buy the computers out of here and farm the shock prods, that gives us a pretty nice setup to get these Cairos in a way that uh, works well for an early game account. And uh, again, with the Opticio account, that's all I've been doing is just buying the computers to keep, to keep from having to farm them or find them somewhere else. The shard shop opens up when you get a character to seven stars and have shards left over. So the first time you seven star a character where you have any shards past 100 on that last click, it'll feed that into the shard shop and it will convert it to shard shop currency. Now, there is just so much good stuff in the shard shop. I can't even begin to explain how much I love this shop and how much it drives pretty much everything uh, efficient that I can do in the game. There's a line of gold and purple materials that cost 360. These are materials used to bring characters to relic level. And again, like I've prioritized things out of the other shop, those need to be the priority out of here. Yes, you can buy Carbontes. Yes, you can buy other stuff. But, you know, don't at first. Really focus on getting those materials for relics so that you don't have to farm them. Again, if you don't have to spend uh, energy farming those things, uh, it saves you so much time on relic and characters. It's insane. So this shard shop is a big deal. And uh, proper use of the shard shop is critical. Now, we do need a lot of shop characters. So... Uh, we will be going back and forth between having to build characters out of the shop and being able to use shop currency to overbuy characters and feed it into the shard shop. So for example, 
Um, if there's something in the shard shop that we really want to buy and we don't have currency for it, we can go to the squad arena store, buy a character that we already have at seven stars. It gives us more shards. They go to the shard shop and help us make that purchase. So that's kind of how that works. For the first six months, we definitely need to balance it. Like I said, we need a lot of cantina refreshes. Otherwise, we're really not going to have anything to feed the shard shop. So, yep. Um, and in the end, I think even if you do a good job with that, there's so many characters coming out of the shops that uh, the, I think the consequence of this is the first few characters you relic, you're not going to get to relics, you know, five or seven. You need to be farming the characters with Cantina Energy, so you won't be farming as much signal data. So that's fine. With your first three characters, your first, you know, six characters that you relic or whatever, if they start out at relic one, two, three, that's fine. Get them to relic levels, put some relic levels on them. We can circle back around later and finish them out to higher relic levels. So, again, really focus on the, on the character shard farming early. Get those characters farmed. Get the cantina currency so you can make the purchases out of the shop. Keep everything going. Using bronzium packs, uh, always use the bronzium packs to open them up. Don't use friendship points for something else. Uh, use the available shop currency to feed the account. Uh, you can get two or three purchases at first. Eventually, you can get up to five, but this uh, type of build, you're going to be stuck somewhere between, let's say, three to five purchases for quite a while before it gets any better than that. Buying gold and purple gear for 360 means you don't have to farm it, and that's such a big deal. Uh, if you have to farm everything for a relic, it takes about six weeks to farm up all the pieces. If you've already bought all these pieces out of the shops and you just have them ready to go when the character needs to be reliced, then uh, you can relic a character every couple weeks. It makes such a huge difference. Can't even explain it. Focus on those 360 purchases at first. Even if you feel like, oh, I'm behind on this other gear and I really want to get my troopers built up or whatever it is, don't sacrifice it. Once you start getting behind on those relic materials, you can't get caught back up. So focus them in the right way. The Conquest Store. I don't use the Conquest Store at all. I wait until Conquest is open. Uh, there's a wandering scavenger in there that has gold pieces and, and uh, used for relicking characters. And again, it's the same thing. The more of this stuff I can buy for relicking characters, the more I don't have to farm it. So um, if you get impatient, you can buy gear out of here. You can buy Carbantes and some things like that. But, uh, but really, the smartest thing to do, play Conquest. And by the end of Conquest, just make sure you go into that Wandering Scavenger and buy all the stuff that, that helps you out of the Wandering Scavenger. It's the best use. It, let's say it's the most efficient in terms of how you spend that currency. You get the most crystal value out of it for buying gold pieces uh, used um, Mark 12 pieces used to relic characters. Okay, so the summary. Prioritize your shops in the right way. Get those characters first for the stabilization and then for the journeys. And then use all the available currency to feed the shard shop. But again, remember we're keeping a bank on a lot of these. So you, you shouldn't even be feeding the shard shop until you have the bank secured and then working on the characters. And then shard shop only comes if you have extra currency. Ideally, we're looking ahead for the next journey. We gather some shards, and we have to do that ahead of the journey start. All right. The store. So right next to the shop is the store. And in the store, you've got these bronzium data cards. You're always going to want to use those. Uh, Hyperdrive bundle, of course, is the best value in the game. There's nothing that compares to it at the time of this holocron. It costs $49.99. And then buying crystals... Again, there's gear packs in the game that are fairly efficient, but uh, really for an account like this, there's nothing you can do with money that's more effective than just uh, getting a chest of crystals and making cantina refreshes. Uh, if you see chromium data cards in there, uh, nope, that's a big nope for me, don't do that. Uh, also, you're going to be out of credits for the first six months that you play the game. After that, you're going to be mostly out of credits. Uh, credits are never something that you just have 200 million of sitting around. Or if you do, why? There's stuff to spend it on in the game all the time. Um, but the conversion rate on spending crystals to buy currency in terms of credits is horrible. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that for anybody. Again, 560 uh, 
crystals spent here. Instead, over a, a couple days, you could spend almost six cantina refreshes and you would get a ton of credits uh, from farming those cantina nodes anyway. So uh, this, is, this is horrible. Don't do it. Don't ever be tempted by it. Uh, there's also an online store, so if you go to this link with the Galaxy of Heroes store, or just search online, do a Google search or whatever, and just say Swiggo Online Store, it'll bring it up. You'll be able to connect with it through the account, and you'll be able to log in. You'll get an email that has a little code. You click on the mystery chest, and you collect it daily, and it gives you rewards that come into the game. It looks kind of like this, and it's free stuff. You know, you get a little bit of, you know, gear sometimes. You get... Uh, some currency sometimes, energy, you get uh, character shards, and it's not much, but it's for free. And if you take, you know, what's in this pack, and uh, you do that for 360 days and other people don't, uh, you could see where that's a pretty good advantage, puts you ahead of them. So the reason they want to direct you to that online store instead of the in-game store is pretty simple. If you buy it out of their online store, they get all the profit. If you buy it in the in-game store, they have to pay part of that profit to the to the app makers and stuff like that. So, you know what? It's free stuff. It'll put you ahead. Know about it. Work on it. All right, so now we're going to wrap back around to fleets. This Geo fleet, as it works early on, usually contains the Vulture Droid. I could not find any reasonable way to put uh, the Vulture Droid into this farming guide. So we have to do without it. That makes Jedi Knight Anakin's ship even more important in this build because we do need... We do need that Jedi Knight Anakin ship to come in as a reinforcement, apply buff immunity so that we can beat opposing Houndstooth ships. All right. It needs the Executrix. And in order to get the Executrix event completed, you need five dark side ships at four stars. And then to unlock the level 78 Fleet Material 3 challenge itself, it requires six ships at five stars. If you want to use the Vulture Droid at five stars, uh, you have to do, uh, in, in this build, you're going to have to spend money. You're going to have to force refresh it. Uh, it's a pretty awful way to try to get it. You can also farm the TIE Silencer from Cantina 3F. But again, uh, unless you're spending enough money to have crystals uh, in this particular build, it, I just don't think that we're going to be able to get that TIE Silencer. So that's what I would typically recommend, but in this build, it's going to look like this. So we're going to do Spy, Sunfac, and Soldier. We're going to do the Imperial TIE Fighter because it's a readily available common, easy to get. And we're going to do the First Order TIE Fighter again because it's a dark side ship that comes out of the shop. Pilot comes out of the shop. You can get the pilot unlocked. You can get the ship unlocked. And remember... You don't have to build this ship at all. The Geos are going to do all the work. It's fine. This ship can be, uh, you know, five stars, level one. Uh, the pilot can be level one uh, garbage. Who cares? Uh, you just need the stars on the ship to qualify for the event in the first place. But uh, we're not going to get Vulture Droid. We're not going to get TIE Silencer. So that leaves us needing this fifth dark side ship. And uh, for me, uh, that first order TIE is the easiest one to grab. If you guys think of something that's better and you want to plan it and do it, uh, that's fine by me. But just remember, you need five dark side ships at four stars, which for this build is three Geos, the Imperial Tie, First Order Tie, and then you need six ships at five stars, and we're going to add in Ahsoka. So basically, if those first five are all five stars anyway, then we only need Ahsoka's ship um, at five stars, to add to that, and we have our whole lineup. And again, the Geo ships should be in good shape for you. Uh, the Imperial TIE Fighter is not too hard to build, and uh, the TIE Pilot's an okay character. The ship's a, a decent ship, so if you, if you put any effort in, I would put it in the Imperial TIE, not the First Order TIE. All right, Ahsoka ships out of the shop. It's easy to get. All right, uh, Zeta applications in this first se uh, sequence. The... We're going to want Emperor's Trap and Veer's Aggressive Tactician. Again, we're going for these assault battle completions very early on, and getting those Zetas on is required to get that trooper team up and running in the right way to get the assault battles done. So I'm um, going to recommend those as the first Zetas again. 
Darth Vader, Merciless Massacre, Geo Brood Alpha, Queen's Will. And then the fifth Zeta, we're going to take a little departure here, and we're going to look at Vandor, Chewbacca, Ferocious Protector. And again, we're going to build a team under Dash Rendar that's going to use Vandor, Chewbacca. So that Zeta is going to be something that we're going to want to grab re relatively early in the cycle. And then for Darth Vader, we're going to want to grab No Escape. And again, that is incredibly handy in Conquest. There's a bunch of teams where one character is in stealth, and um, having No Escape is going to allow Darth Vader to pop those characters out of stealth so that he can make uh, full advantage out of his um, Merciless Massacre. So that's going to be something you want to get. Uh, so what's next? We're going to wrap up part one here. So we've kind of built the initial teams. We've talked through the shops. We've talked through the fleet challenge. So we're going to tie it off here and say, okay, we're still on our way to 85. We've got the event done. We're building the right characters and teams, working toward level 85. So in part two, we're going to finish out to level 85. We're going to finish out what I call block zero, stabilizing the account. We're going to discuss the relevant game modes and what you can expect performance to look like. Um, and again, if you're free to play and you started that way, uh, you're, you're not going to be placing number one in fleets by the time you're level 83. Uh, so set your expectations at, at, at a reasonable level. We'll talk about that. We'll go into building the Block 1 teams, which is the CLS team. He's your first, uh, not really a journey, but uh, uh, basically building the CLS team going through that is going to be the first block. And we'll do recommendations again for Zetas, Omicrons, all that kind of stuff for Block 1. We'll talk about GAC strategy, all kinds of good stuff. That is going to conclude the first Holocron in Hope of the Rebellion. I hope to see you all back here for the second Holocron, and we'll continue to talk through this journey.